Hi everyone, welcome to the next video um, of Multigo. Uh, today we're going to look a bit at extending the tool, so how you can use it with your own data and your own applications, um, and how you can sort of use it to, to visualize almost any data that you have. Uh, so there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, firstly, you can use uh, manual linking, um, something that we've implemented heavily within case file and something that you'll use a lot in case file, but also is within the standard Multigo client. So this is where you create your own kinds of entities. Um, so for example, if I have, say, an internal DNS server, and I wanted a specific entity for a specific reason, um, you know, if I'm working with my data and I want to have it as a Pitova client, and I want to be able to differentiate it between different clients, I can then go and create entities based on this, and then I can use them within the tool. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. At this stage, you should be more than comfortable with opening the tool, having a new graph open, um, setting your slider to whatever you need it to. Um, for this, uh, we're not actually going to going to use the slider much today because we're going to just you know look at extending it. Okay, so the first thing is under the Manage tab uh, at the top, you'll see there's an Investigate and a Manage tab. Under the Manage tab, you'll see that there's uh, something on the left that says New Entity Type. So from here, I can drop this down and just click on it to get the standard entity uh, creation wizard, or I can have an advanced one, which allows you to uh, define different properties for entities and so on. Uh, in this case, we're just going to use the standard entity type. So let's say I wanted to create something. Um, in this case, uh, let's call it a uh, Perturva client, because we discussed that already. And there might be a reason that I want to, to use these within Multigo to kind of visualize my client base. Um, so I can set a display name for it. So this is what you'll see on the uh, palette on the left, and we described through it. Short description, I'm going to say uh, this is a client of Perturva. Give it a name, I'm going to call it uh, perturva.client and then I can give it an icon and you'll see we, we include you know a whole bunch of icons that you can use within the tool just so you don't have to spend time creating them. Um, so I think all our clients look like this because they're all fancy in ways, suits, oh and they earpieces, yes. Okay, um, then again I can just set these fields up for other places in the client. So here this is going to be client of the server and I'm going to say what the type is. Uh, by default I'm going to use a string. Honestly most of the time I will be using a string because it's easier to work with and I'm not forced into a specific type. Uh, then I can give it a default value and the default value is going to be Andrew because I believe that Andrew is a client of the server. Uh, next I can add it to a category so I can pick whichever one I want. Uh, let's say I'm going to add it to personal because it's kind of uh, related to those entities or I can create a new um, a new category. So let's say we've got a category called Perturva, which is something that we'll use. Okay, then you'll see at the top I've now got something, a Perturva category, and I've got this Perturva client that I can drag onto the graph, and there it is, as Andrew. So now I can start doing things like saying, okay, well, you know, let me grab a person, uh, to John Doe, and he's related to, I was going to manually link that, he's related to, server client 01246AS and um, so now I can start mapping out these different relationships myself um, just using the tool and being able to manually link things together. So I just want to show you manual linking um, in a little bit more detail. So for example let's say I worked offline or someone's given me offline data to work with and said hey they know this domain uh, evildomain.com and they say that well they know that there's a telephone number because someone who works there has told them so what I can do is I can add evil domain, I can add a telephone number and I'm going to say it's uh, 085674 and now I can say okay well I want to link these two together so what I can do is I can just uh, I left mouse click on the on the one and drag a line to the other one and then you'll get this nice wizard that comes up um, in this case I'm going to say um, yeah, given from source to ABC I'm going to say it is red. So I can also start giving different properties to the to the lines. Um, I can change it from solid dash dotted or dash dotted, uh, de depending on, on what kind of line, link I'd like. I can set the thickness and give it a weight, a reference, and a description. In this case, I'm just going to set the label. Um, and now I've got a, a nice example of, of these two manually linking together. And of course, if I've got evil domain, I can still run my normal transforms and still get the same results back. 
So it's a nice way to link your offline data or data that you're getting from you know sources that don't have transforms, um, and link them with with your normal transforms that you've been running on a graph. Okay, so one of the next things that we look at is that you can create your own transforms, obviously, um, and there's two main ways of doing this. The one is that you can use uh, what we call local transforms. So local transforms are where there's a bit of code that runs in your specific machine. Um, in my case here, yeah, I'm going to use uh, Python and just some, some simple code. Um, or you can use it on the net, um, which is a nice way to share transforms. And this is what's known as the TDS. So basically, you can think of the TDS as a proxy server for transforms, where the client will communicate to the TDS. The TDS will make the link to the specific transform that needs to be run, so it's available on the net, and then pass the data back. Um, one of the nice things about this is that you don't have to set up your environment for each specific machine that you want to transform on. Uh, but of course it is accessible to the web, so sometimes you'd like to still have local transforms for say integrating with internal uh, applications that you have, uh, so internal servers and internal, you know, any sort of login credentials. Uh, anything that you want to put in just that sits on your local network. So we'll first look at that. Um, I'm just going to load up uh, some code here quickly just so you can see how easy it is. There's pretty much an XML specification for it. Uh, so in this case, it's just, let me make that a bit bigger. It's just really writing out uh, this XML that says, hey, I'm adding a new entity. It's an alias, and its value is coolguy72. OK, so now at any stage, I can now run this on whatever I've done and have it print this out. And of course, in your case, you'd be extending it with your own applications and your own code. So it'd be a lot more complicated than just writing it out. But at the end of the day, all it needs to do is uh, write XML to stand it out. Okay, so to create a new transform, uh, under the Manage tab again, so at the top, you're going to click on New Transform. Uh, you're going to give it a display name, so we're going to say this is uh, Two Known Alias, and we're going to have the description as uh, Looks Up a Perturba Client Alias. Okay, so we're going to give it an ID. Um, we're just going to call this Andrew dot server client alias, author name Andrew, and now we're going to set the ent entity input type. So this is the transform that you're going to run it on, uh, the entity that you're going to run this transform on. I mean, so remember as before, uh, you can have things like a domain, uh, which has a whole bunch of transforms, and then a website which has a whole bunch of transforms. But some of the transforms, you know, they don't overlap. Transforms are specific to an entity type. So in this case, I'm going to just scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to make it on, run on a Perturva client. And now I get to the part where I just get to specify what I want. Um, so I give it an application to run. In this case, it's going to be C drive Python 2.7 Python.exe. Of course, if you're on Unix, it's user bin Python. Um, you know, if you've got a C application, it'll just be straight to executable. Uh, then you can give it a parameter. So this is your command line arguments. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, I think I call this example, example.py. And there is a working directory as well. So this is the directory that it's going to run in. Um, so I'm just going to, this is C drive local transforms. And you'll see here at the bottom, uh, it actually gives you a, a command line that will be executed. Um, and there is a specification for this that you can get on the web. And we just, we love helping people write transforms. So if you have anything, just, you know, feel free to mail us. Can I click finish? Now I can drag my Perturva client on, and you'll see that if I right-click, there's a transform to known alias. Because obviously there's no other transform written for this um, apart from mine. Now when I run it, you'll see that it executes some Python code. Um, you can see it here in the debug window at the bottom, uh, and that just outputted my my message. Uh, of course, there are also some uh, libraries that we've written, just basically to help you uh, write the XML out. I'm just going to load one of those up quickly. Uh, You'll see here's a basic example of one um, that just says, I import the multi library, I add a person entity, and I give it a value, um, and then I return it. So this is a really nice way uh, just to quickly hook it into your code. So you have your whole Python script, and then you just plug this in somewhere near the bottom uh, so that it returns that output. So we're gonna gonna add this example again. So I'm gonna say new transform, give it uh, two person with library, with lib. Give it an ID again with Andrew. And 
again I'm gonna have it run on my new entity that I've created same details as before oh, this one is called example lib.py I believe I'm just gonna check that yeah and the directory is C drive local transforms okay so now I've finished it now I can run this one and to person with library and then I get the same output um, you know and I've got new entities so now I can start building onto my applications uh, one of the things that's you know really quite difficult with local transforms however is that they're of course run on your machine so every time you want to set it up you'll have to go and recreate the whole environment so you'll have to have Python you have to have all the libraries that you need um, or if you've got a .NET application uh, got anything like Ruby you'll have to install all, all, all the little bits that it needs um, so one of the ways that we worked around this was by using what we know, what we call the TDS, as Transform Distribution Server. As I described earlier, it's kind of like a proxy uh, for uh, for transforms. So instead of my client calling a local application, it now calls basically a web service, um, and that communicates with, say, uh, you know, another web service and brings it back. Yeah, dude, no, stop, stop now, quick, save your stuff. Hey guys, okay, uh, we've had to move quickly because of the storm, unfortunately ruined our last location. So we're going to cover basically the last section of extending the tool with the TDS, Transform Distribution Server, and we're just going to go over the basics of that. Um, as I described before, you can think of it like a proxy server for transforms. So your clients, um, so let's say you've got a team of 10, all make requests to the TDS, and the TDS then says, hey, what transforms are you looking for? Okay, I know they live on this web server here makes a request to say a PHP script or a CGI, uh, something like that, which does the work and then passes it back through the system. So the TDS is actually uh, just a web interface. Uh, you can just browse to it at ctaz.server.com slash TDS. Um, and you'll see it looks something like this. So I'm just gonna log in here with my username and hopefully get that capture right. Uh, not today, unfortunately. Okay, just going to log in here with my username again, password, and now I'll be able to see the interface. It's basically divided into a few sections. One is seeds, transforms, and transform settings. Um, so I'll start with the, the easiest ones is transform settings. Uh, these are pop-up windows or um, windows where there will be variables that are within the client that the user can change. So. As we changed previously, we changed the transform setting uh, for the net blocks using natural boundaries. We said we want a class C. That would be a transform setting, and that's an example of one that you'd use here. Uh, then we've got seeds. So a seed is basically um, an index of all the transforms that are available um, or that you've set availability. You can think of it like an index for a book uh, where it'll say there are these chapters that you can get to um, and, and their locations. So a seed is something like that. And then, of course, a transform. Uh, basically is where the server is, uh, where the, the web script is with the CGI uh, that you're going to run, the actual transform, uh, the name of it, what type of input entity it's run on, so a domain or you know a person or even our uh, Perturva, uh, Perturva client, so something like that. Um, and that kind of builds up to the TDS. So I'll see here under transforms, I've got a whole uh, bunch of them. I just clicked on transforms. So let's look at, say, something like uh, domain to SOA information. So that just says, okay, there's the name of it, domain to SOA, SOA information. There's the link to it, it's just a PHP script. Uh, it runs on a domain, and I can set a disclaimer and a description, um, and then I can set which seeds it's part of. Uh, now, once you've got a specific seed, because um, of course you'll, you'll have to add things to indexes, um, and these seeds will allow people to automatically uh, discover these transforms with what we call the discovery process. So if I go back to the main screen and I click on seeds, I've got a whole bunch, um, but we're just going to look at one. So let's say this infrastructure seed um, over here, this basically has a URL. And that URL um, is something that you can specify with a URI name. So I can set it to some sort of secret of name that only I know. And once someone has this, then they can use that within the client. So I'm just going to show you here. I'm just going to copy this link. I'm going to my client. Under Manage, and we're going to click Discover Transforms, and I'll be able to add a seed. So this one I'm going to call 
infrastructure. I'm going to give it a link and I'm going to click add. Um, and you'll see it's down here somewhere in the list. There it is. Um, now I can just click next. You see, it's now going to the TDS server saying, hey, I've got the seed, uh, which is obviously the lookup of all the transforms that are available. Um, and the TDS has said, hey, these are the transforms you can access from the seed. So yeah, I'm just going to click next again. And it's going to show me, hey, you've got all of these transforms available. I can view the descriptions of them. Um, and now I have access to them. And anyone that I give this specific seed or this specific URL to, they will also have access to it. So that's a really nice way to have your transforms uh, in a distributable form. So now whenever I make a change, then um, all the analysts will immediately see the change and they, they'll, you know, they don't have to know anything about the code side of it. So they don't have to have any environment variable set up or any libraries and things like that. So that's a really nice quick overview of the TDS. And those are the ways that you can extend Multigo. So it's either through custom entities, so where you're in uh, sort of graphing mode or sketch mode as we say, uh, where you've got different types of information, um, not the defaults that we've got, that you've specified, and you're linking them together, either with your own local transforms, or your TDS transforms, or you're manually linking them as we showed earlier. So I think that kind of covers extending, um, and thanks for watching.